Indian Territory. Indian Territory, that's what I tell them. I, I tell people, I used to tell them, I said, you know, I can say that I wasn't born in the United States, and still I never was out of it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, today is November 20th. Well, you couldn't prove it to me. 1987. Uh-huh. This is Joe Todd, an interview with Mr. Douglas Colbert, and we're at Fort Washita. Mm -hmm. Sir, where were you born? Well, we were in that big two-story rock house that's burned down. Mm -hmm. 1905, December 1. Who was your father? Charlie Colbert. And your mother? Well, her name was Abby Davis, and of course, she didn't have to be married, but then Colbert. Her first name was Abby? Yeah, huh? Abby? Abby, uh -huh. Were your parents both from this area, in the territory? Well, I see. I, uh, I'm not for sure about my mother, but my father, yeah, he was born down in Colbert. Mm -hmm. Let's see. My uh, people, I don't know where my mother was born, anyhow, they came from Missouri. And they settled at Preston Bend, uh, uh, you know, you know where it is, it's on the Red River. What, just out Around Colbert somewhere down there, to the west, I think, they called it Preston Bend. Um, what kind of work did your father do? He was a rancher. Rancher? He had three ranches at one time here around over the country. He wouldn't plant any cotton. There's always livestock feed stuff he raised. He, he hated cotton. He said that robbed too many little children out of education way back there. He said this should be outlawed. <laughs> That's why he looked at it. Did you know your grandparents? Huh? Did you know your grandparents? Uh, just my grandmother on my father's side. Now on my mother's side I knew both, see. My grandmother was a Fulson. What was her name? That's an old time family. Yeah. You know. What was her first name? Huh? I'm trying to think of it. Well, I had it right on the end of my tongue and then I never forgot it. Huh? Oh, I don't know whether it wasn't Evangeline or Something like that, but I just can't think of it. Which of the, uh, did any of the Colberts come over the Trail of Tears? No. The Colberts, the Willises, and the Loves, you know, that's, that's familiar to you, isn't yeah. it? They came and picked out what they wanted on that Red River, and then went back and got it all together, and they said they'd like to never got them here. And they were bought about 200 horses with them. And they just camped along and picnicked and just had a hell of a big time. <laughs> so that's what I was told. <laughs> when did they come? You know what year? Mississippi. I mean, what year did they come? Do you know? Oh, they were before the Civil War. Mm -hmm. I know that. So they came, did they come before the Trail of Tears? Before the removal? Oh, Right after that, or in in there somewhere, I don't know the exact date, but, but they didn't come over no trail of tears. Yeah. The Culver's, the Willis's, and the Loves. You're familiar with those names, yes. aren't you? That Love County down there? Yeah. Uh, oh, Judge Love? Huh? That old, that was that Judge Love? Yeah. Let's see. The Willis's, see. Well, it's Love County over there. Yeah. Know, and I don't, I, I just know that they came in a party. They brought the slaves, everything with them. They had oh, over 200 head of horses. And I don't know what all it is. They stopped down around 4,000 for a while, down in there somewhere, and then came on up, <coughs> over. That's so I was told. Now, this up. See, Eastern Oklahoma, I don't know whether you've been down there, no, it's historic site or not, but it's pretty rich. In history, you know, there's some, especially in Royals, one cemetery, especially it's 
It's a phenomenal thing to see all throughout the Daniel Woods. <laughs> uh, your grandmother, Folsom. Yes. Was she related to David and Israel Folsom? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. How was she related to him? Do you know? Huh? How was she related to him? Do you know? Well, uh, I don't know. Her father died soon after they was on the way or come well, uh, soon after they came here, you see. I don't know much about him. His name was, well, I called her was, uh, that was my father's, father's name, James Allen. My, that's my younger brother. That's his name now, James Allen. <coughs> now, my, my name is Douglas Charles. I was named after Governor Johnson up here at Tishomingo, and then my father's name was, they called him Charlie, you know. I called it Charles, D.C. Um, how did your father obtain the old fort here at Fort Washington? <laughs> well, at that time, he got, he told me, he got possession of it when he was 19 years old. And then when... Uh, what year was that? Well, he was born in 61, so I'd be about, well, about 80 or 81, you know. Yeah, yeah about 80. How did, he, how did he get possession of it? Huh? How did he get possession of it, of the fort? Well, at that time, it was, I think it was more a lease land and everything else. And then when they come up there and allotted this land, he took uh, this part right here from my mother's. See, she was white. But he took this as her allotment, see. The whites could draw to get to if they married the Indians, see, they, they got the rights. So that's the way that, that, that was. And then, uh, oh, I don't know, he had a lot of holdings in here, but here was the thing about it. Now, I had, I got in on the tail end of that, and what went valuation, not, not the amount of acres, and boy, I was land poor. So uh, back over here, well, I had, my father sold that in 1911. I don't know what he got for it, but he gave me, to protect me then, he gave me the first mortgage on this place. And it got on up there, and when he went broke, well, they wouldn't see, the, well, I'd give away over 100 acres of my own over here to another uncle that went broke, and they all went broke. But I hung on to this regardless, and I didn't have any children. And he got up there and I went off to war. I built that. I, I had to put, times, you don't know anything about depression, but anyhow, I had to put my mother and father back in that cabin. Later years then, I got some money and I built a, I had enough more chimneys than that uh, that's over there now, but those are two originals the house was on, so that's where I, I built that house for my mother and father. And then, uh, Later, of course, they died in Durante. And then the fellow up there that's buried in our plot, the name Buck Loper, well, I let him, I was in California, I didn't come back until I come back to stay in the fall of 69. And I let him live in that house, and he died. And then, well, it rocked along, and at that time I didn't think I'd ever came back, come back, so I decided to. Nobody's going to have that board, but I said, I told him, I said, I wrote to the store beside him, made connection, told him, well, I couldn't exactly give it to him, but they'd come up with $10,000 and they could have it. But I kept the house and I said, I have to keep the cemetery in that and I'll keep what's across the road. This is just, this is all, this is short 20. I've been over $150,000. <laughs> Here, and I said, well, man, I said, it's the last place I've got besides the cemetery. And I said, I, I, I wouldn't sell it, not that I'm wealthy, but I would sell it to you for a million dollars. I said, no, oh. I said, I'm gonna, my motto is, let me live in a house with the side of a road and be a friend of man. Now, that's not my own quotation, that's somebody else, right, way back there somewhere, a writer or some kind. I never did forget it after I, when I read it, see. I don't know who it was, but that was his one. He wrote, said, let me live in the house for the side of the road and be a friend of man. So that's always been my motto. 
Well, I'm not wealthy, but I don't have to worry about going to work tomorrow. And then, well, I'm right here. I see. Uh, don't misunderstand me. This is poor country to make a living in. Of course, it's better than it used to be. This different generation, you see. But they didn't want any progress. Do you have any stories of the old fort? I beg your pardon. Uh, did your father tell you stories about the old fort when it was still a military? Or have you heard he any stories about it? He wasn't here. He was born in 61, see. This year was 65, you know. And, you know, no, he, even in my damn time, I mean, growing up, it was, they were stationed here or something, you know. And some of those came back. I, I, of course, I was small, but they'd, they'd tell about being here during the what stores did they tell you? What stores did you hear? Oh, just about, well, I was young, see, I, I don't remember too much, but they, they'd walk around, I remember they had, to, they wore their medals on their suits, you know, <laughs> yeah, and all. Of course, I was young, but I remember, and that's, that's all, I can't tell you much about it. Being a little child, it didn't impress me very much, you know. <laughs> I considered them more or less transient and bumming off my dad. Yeah. <laughs> um, when did uh, Douglas Cooper die? Do you know? No, I really don't know. I guess you can find out from the historic side of things. Yeah. Was, uh, did you know him or had he died oh, before? Oh, no, he was born way before I was born. Okay. He was grown when my father, you see. Yeah. He was a Confederate general or yeah. something, you yes, know. Was, yeah. And is that the cabin that you put your parents in? The cabin huh? that he built? What? Is that, is his cabin the one that you put your parents in? Oh yeah. Now that used to have a, another, it was a tee. The room went off on the north and then out there about where Raymond's got his pickup now, it had a smokehouse there. That was back, oh, I don't know. 40 or 50 years ago. My brother and them, they had it, chickens in there and the mice got in there, so he, he proceeded to get rid of the mice. Well, he got rid of the whole thing. <laughs> Built it and all. He didn't know it. He woke up in the night and it's all burning. <laughs> uh, could you tell me just some of the chores you did around the house, around the old fort when you were a small boy? The chores. Yeah, what work he did on the ranch. Well, I mean, this was it. This was our ranch home. See, we had a nigger man in the house and a nigger, uh, a black boy at the bar. Of course, um, but it was all general work, you know. My father wouldn't. It was always feed stuff, cattle and hogs. He had chickens, and he wouldn't have any gooses. He had what a few. He had our ducks because he didn't want them getting in the, in the stock water all the time, you know. <laughs> but now, right in here, he had a ten-acre orchard, and underneath this tree, right out there, is one of the old pear trees, and then there's some down that fence line. I think I got five left. No, you see. This, everything went on section lines until they built this dam, see. They, they, then they put this through here. How much of the old fort was left when you were a boy? Besides the house you lived in and the cabin? And, was it south Oh, well, that's, that's all it. I, now you see, that house wasn't even over there. The later, oh, out north now, right due north, Across that road out there where that chimney is over there, well, we had a buggy, what we called a carriage shed there, of course. Uh, that's uh, the better, well, the buggies and so, and the wagons went in there, you see. Now, right out in the middle of that thing, about where those flag poles are, there was a huge oak tree stood there. That's where a lot of the plow troops wound up under that thing. Of course, now, that big oak house, a big oak tree out there in front of the 
house now, it's kiddly, had swings all over that. Uh, that's my pride and joy. I've been afraid it just lighten and struck. Because that's the way we lose these trees. You don't have to hit them very hard to kill them, you know. Uh, where'd you start the school? Huh? Where'd you start the school? Where did you start the school? Right down here under the hill, known as Fort Washington. Then, uh, let's see, 1916. World War I was over in 1918. The house where I built burned the fall of 16, and then we moved to Milburn. And that, it's up here. That used to be a good little town. It had two banks in it two, way back there when I was a kid, you know. Two banks and two gins. And, well, it, it was a good little town. And then it was a shipping point for cattle and hogs. See, see it wasn't no, it was hogs. If you raised them, you couldn't come to haul them out. You had to, we had to hop, drive them out. But my father always drove his hogs back to Mead here. That used to be a shipping center two years ago. We'd leave here at sunup and wouldn't get down there until noon with those uh, hogs. Of course, I, I didn't drive them. I was just a kid. I, so I took care of every guy who had a horse. You know. That's the way to get around horseback back in those days. And I managed the horses. We'd leave here at sunup and it'd take us noon to get down there. Uh, Was there anything left of Hatsboro over here? Not now. Uh, Was there, when you were a boy, was there anything? Oh, over there? there was a settlement there. Now, was that the town that sprang up for the fort? Now, that was civilians, you know. It was always a civilians, a little old town or something around ever. Well, you know, around every fort. That's what that was over there. How big was Hatsboro? Well, it was. Oh, I don't know. I couldn't tell you. But it was, for years, it was always somebody lived over there. And they were and they got out to one house, and now there's nothing, you see. I, I went over there, well, a couple of years ago, and I went down north there, about as far as near the, the big building over there from that, uh, from here, and down that draw. Oh, I must have picked up about down in the little wash down through there. I must have picked up three or four pounds old square nails and that thing. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, I've been on, I've combed this place and metal detector and everything else. And I had a lot of hearse come back. He had some people in here I didn't like. That's when I'd shoot them out in the historical side of coast having them here, uh, this politics, and I said, now, I was promised no politics being here, and I said, I What year did you graduate from high school? Huh? Did you graduate from high school? Well, now you see an end, and then now uh, you turn to Murray College, you know, up here. Murray, Tishomingo. Well, that used to be an Indian school, see. Well, that's where I got mechanical and agricultural. Uh, I went off from eighth grade on up through first year in college, and that's when that depression hit. You're too young to know anything about it, but boy, didn't it, it was awful. Of course, it didn't make any of you raised anything else under Mr. Hoover. You know what a Hoover hog is, don't you? What's that? Cottontail rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> That's a Hoover hog. <laughs> oh, it got bad. Uh, you, if you raised anything, you couldn't sell it. And we'd have had a revolution if President Roosevelt hadn't become elected. I'm not kidding. You, you raised it, you couldn't sell it, or you, well, you just, Farmer just, they went broke by the hands full, all of them. They just couldn't, nothing. We'd have, well, we'd have had a revolution, you know. And he really turned things around starting in 1936.
that, that's when he started with all these CC camps and, and everything. He really put people to work, see. Were you in the CCC? Oh, no, no. What about WPA? No. <laughs> Out of the traveling salesman. <laughs> <laughs> Who'd you work for? Wilson Company. Wilson Out of Oklahoma City? Oklahoma City, yeah. Where'd you travel? Well, I traveled from uh, just this side of Amarillo down there. I can't think of the name of the town right now. From there, there across Oklahoma to the Queen, Arkansas. <laughs> yeah. What were your duties with Wilson? What'd you do? The salesman. I mean, what, sell the product, the meat product? Yeah, the, the general line. And who'd you, who are your main customers? Anybody that had the money and the credit rating. I didn't care. Was it mainly stores or individuals? Oh, yeah, or? yeah, stores. You know, nationally, you know. How long did you work for Wilson? I worked for him three years. Now, that's South coming to go to California. Hollis, Oklahoma, that's in the southwest corner. And that was during the Dust Bowl days. I never met finer people in my life than I did in that town. They, my wife, she was working in a telephone company in Oklahoma City, and we went down there. I'll tell you what, they treated us just like kinfolks. And they just took us right in. And then, uh, there's where I made my con this connection. The only way we were lost in it was lightning scene, you kill them. We've all several. I know, now just that house over there I built out, just north of there, along the edge of that, where they, hey, you walk the grounds, I guess. Oh, yeah. It? And where that road down, oh man, that was a beautiful tree. We lost it since I built that house and then had one out in the middle. I tell you what, if we're we right about where the flagpoles are, yeah. we had a beautiful oak tree there and lost it. The lightning. Yeah, let me charge this battery up a little bit. We'll go on over there and we can. I, 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 her, her, and she's leaving. I can't leave. I have an invalid wife. Yeah. Well, so we have a lady that says she's, she's up and around, but she has Alzheimer's, so I just can't leave her. Yes. Yeah. You know what? Wait a minute. Um, Get on your horse and go, honey, if you have no, to. No, wait go. a minute, Doug. No, wait a minute. You and I both are pushing a panic button here, okay? After I covered all that ground, I, I had a room here. Where are those pictures you had? Huh? Where are the pictures you had of this stuff in that room? Were they, do you know? Pictures of what? How you had the room done? Oh, they're in there somewhere. Yeah. And they're supposed to do so darn much with all that. And I gave it to them, and, and you know, they set, put up a case there. I, I glanced through the window, a little dab here, a little dab there. And I had it in that room in there. Of course, it's messed up. My wife got sick, and I haven't got it straightened out. But, but I was offered five thousand dollars for what I'd picked got picked up since I come back and used the metal detector on this place. See? Oh, I now in here. I had uh, just a rough-looking old board, and I forgot how many. And I had a spread eagle on there that I dug up. Well, there it is, yeah. I was looking for that in there. It's on the back, too. But, yeah, but I gave all that to them over there, and they hadn't displayed a damn thing. That's been an alright, well, it's been two years now. That's what I said. I, I have a word for it. They're good boys, but they don't get far enough away from the house. <laughs> Um, now, was the two-story rock oh, house, yeah. was it all original when you lived there? I beg pardon? Was it original when you lived there? No. Oh, my father, you see, none of it, it wasn't in a two-story. If it was, it'd be like with this, now the one they were stored there was our barn, see. Now, and the best I can find out was well, none of those buildings was any higher than that, that was, a model now that they restored, see, as far as I know. They didn't have to go up with the rock. Now, he went on up with the rock on that other one, see. No, this more like 
the one that restored C. Uh, when when did the family move into the two-story? Huh? When did the family move into the two-story building over there? When did he build it? Yeah, uh, when did he move into it? Oh, I see. Well, before the turn of the century. Now, did he build that or was that from the fort? It was, you see the one, now they're restored. Yeah, right. Uh, none of these buildings was any higher than that, you see. Now, the one they restored over there was our barn. And that over there, well, now you see, well, he built the other top on it, you see. He went on up and made it two-story. Well, I mean, out of rock. Now, uh, but uh, the way I understand it, it's more like the building right right there that the, they restored, see. Was the first floor of that building, was it from the old fort? Yeah, well, it's just like this over yeah. here, you see. Now, that's been restored. That was our barn. Mm -hmm. and, and now, the historical side, they restored that since they come back. You can say it's about the only thing that's original is that log cabin. Old General Cooper lived in that. Now, it's just like I told them. They messed that thing up when they restored it, see. There wasn't no cement daubing in there, it was red clay and shapes, you know. And then on the north there, well, it had a long room and made a tea. Went off there. That was a, where they ate and, and cooked. And one long room up there, and then right about where Raymond's truck is in there, well, you can look around a little bit. It used to be a storm cellar. And where out there where one of those little buildings are, there used to be a huge oak tree right along in there, see. Now I can tell you, and then you go up there and you look out there and that, that first oak tree over there, it's got a great big place on it. I asked my father, I said, what caused that? He said, oh, well, I said, I'll tell you what, I said, I bet you there's 50 pounds of bullets in that thing. <laughs> he said, you used to put up targets and the guys would shoot at them and tell them, oh, well, my father, he I tell you, he, he was a shock. Mm -hmm. He told me, he said, that's when old Bill Cody had Annie Oakley, you know. He says, I challenged that guy and told him I could beat her for a thousand dollars. That's quite a bit of money back in those days. Well, of course, my father was wealthy one time. He said, he asked me my name. He said, oh, no, no, no. He says, I have a show. He says, I've heard about you, how good you can shoot, man. I said, oh. And Daddy told me, he said, well, it's, it's a, he was, well, he said, he was a show, man. He said, Annie, uh, he said, well, I wasn't nothing to it. He said, uh, I went to a show and I saw her. And she went around and said, well, I right, take a nigger shooter and done what she done. <laughs> Shooting those balloons, you know. And he said, then it was shot in those, uh, in those things. And I challenged it shoot against that. He said, no, uh -huh. He said, I have a show. Mm -hmm. Mr. Carter said, I've heard of you. He what? says, I'll give you a job, though. <laughs> <laughs> huh? What kind of floor did the place have in it that you lived in? And that, uh, there two north rooms downstairs. They had a cement floor. But, uh, the stairway was a wall, and then the uh, Oh, he entertained a lot. And he had two huge rooms upstairs, and then two bedrooms up there. And of course, had bedrooms, kitchen, and everything downstairs. But up there, and then up that stairway in there, well, he had uh, what you call a striping floor. What's <laughs> Not, that? You're going to ask for how? Well, it's pine and black walnut. <laughs> Imagine that. Light and dark. So. Now the cement floor, was that from the fort? No, no that was the two downstairs front rooms. No, uh, he, he did that. He so. did? Or about the south part of that building? I, remember when I, I guess when he, when he started, there wasn't no cement used in construction far as I know. It was all lime and, you know, uh, you see, uh, let's see now. I gotta think a minute. Best I remember is right back here is where they slacked the line. 
business in this place. It turned out to be an old well, though, right back back here in the back. See, now, that road, when it went through here, it went through a building right out here. It had a basement in it, see. And it was, it was a hospital, I was told. Of course, now, then here, you see, and there's where they changed the guard and everything else. Now, I had an old timer tell me that that's the first basement there and all. He said he remembers seeing that and thought, geez, he never saw so much loose powder in his life as it was in that building there, just in, in a room on the floor. The you know, old, old soldiers used to come back here when I was a kid, see, they were stationed here during those days. There was never, a lot of people think so badly here, there never was one. Now, I'll tell you something else. You see, this, these forts, they, they, they weren't built to fight the Indians. You know that? Hmm. It's to protect them. Mm -hmm. And because now, you see, Indian territory and all, my father, he, he told me a lot the last time I, before he died, I came back and stayed a month with him. I was living in California. He said, well, I can talk now. And all he said, you know, he said it was dangerous to sit with a light on in your house at night. And said, uh, you better let it road up to anybody's house at night. You better let them know who you were. And he says, my father wore black all the time on a dark horse. He said, a many man got killed right in the gray horse and wearing a white shirt at night. And I said, he said, well, he usually waylaid them. And uh, said. You see, for a long time there was an open range, and then they, they uh, fenced it, you know. Still no roads. And they, they called them roads, and he said there's trails. <laughs> and he said, many men got killed, get down open the gate at night, said, way late. And said, you didn't set with the light on your house at night. And he said, if you rode up to anybody's house, you better let them know who you were. But he told me, he says, cover the ground. He said, I always travel at night. Of course, he said, I rode a, a dark horse. And he said, I dressed in black. Said, black everything. He said, no, it says it's dangerous to wear white or anything like that at night. Speaking of roads, the road from Fort Washita. Huh? Was there a road from Fort Washita to the other forts at one time? Yes, to where? To like Fort Gibson or Fort Towson? Oh, yeah. It was, well, they called them trails, you see. Now, you see, uh, Butterfield Trail come down from Kansas City, I think. And like, uh, it missed Caddo and came on down and then over here, go up here at night and then go due east there down where that Kinnefick Bridge is. Now, just below there is known as the Nails Crossing, see. It's kind of a waterfall and anything. I did have 90 acres there at one time. I gave that to an uncle. He went broke and had a bunch of orphan kids. They're still around here. And, well, just like all my kin folks, I don't know. I try to be good to all of them, but they don't come to see me until they want to be buried in my graveyard, see. I would give them a chewing out too. I said, now don't tell me you don't come down there. I, I know you do because I see where I, I go over to the cemetery about once a week. And I said, I know you've been there because you put flowers on the grave. I said, I live right across the road. I said, I'm not going to bite you or eat you or anything. But I don't know uh, why I don't feel that high and mighty over in them. I, I just can't figure them out. Will there be someone here, or? I beg your pardon? When you leave, will there be someone here, or? Well, I can watch you. Yeah, I'm going to try to get in touch with James and my man. Okay, what time do you have to leave? Wow. Uh, I you said I've gotten a better sense than that. I said, the second lieutenant said, I am or doesn't. I said, uh, When did you? I've had yeah, when did you join the National Guard? Huh? 
When did you join the National Guard? When did I join them? Mm -hmm. It was at Murray State School. And what, what year was that? Uh, I believe it was 1924. I know I was in there in 1925. Mm -hmm. And we had a company in the school, see. I just, I was real young. Were you with the National Guard when they went down to the bridge with Governor Murray? Oh, no. Uh, that was years later. Yeah, that was in... I graduated from Murray up here in 1925. Mm -hmm. And I got married in 1928. Didn't even marry the girl I thought I would. <laughs> when, um... Tell me about your maneuvers in the National Guard. What'd you do? Where did you have your summer camps? Oh, Fort Sale. Fort Sale? Well, I only went up there one year to that, and I was a mess sergeant. And, and, well, I just I never did. 19, I graduated in 1925. Went back to first term in college in 25. And then, then that's when the bottom fell out of everything, and I had to go to work, help support my family. Yeah. My father lost everything he had except this place, and that was because, well, I, I got it, well, I think about $3,000, mm -hmm. and see, I didn't have any children. I rocked along for years, and I went off with World War II, and I did have two sisters through Southeastern, and they was going to do so darn much, and when they got it, oh, I was a wonderful brother, see. Well, they never did do anything. They got married, and that was into that, and then when I went off from war, I, like, got killed in that, well, they coerced my wife through my old feeble mother that they should have a child's part of this place. And so, sure enough, it divided up. And then when I came back, the only sister-in-law I have on my fa father's side, that's my younger brother, the rest of them was girls, and so the wife came to me the next morning crying and said, who's over there at the house? She says, I said, what's the matter with her knees? She said, don't you know you don't own this place anymore? And then she told me the tale. And I said, well, here, I cussed them all out and told them. I said, you all will see me again, but I'll own this place, so... You know, I'd, like I said, time to get it all straightened out is five years. And then it rocked along, and, and then I fell off a roof in California and I like, killed myself. So, and everything went to the bow wells, and well, I, I contacted back here, and, and I just, well, I didn't want anybody else to uh, have it, you know. I could have, well, I could have commercialized it. It was well for Texas oil man contacted me. But I didn't own it that way. I'm not wealthy, but I have a living, so yeah. I just didn't want anybody else to ever have it, so I let the historic society have that $10,000. Of course, I just kept the cemetery. I could kick them out of that house over there tomorrow. But this place has paid me $30,000. I've leased it three times for $10,000 each time. Uh, to oil companies. I, well, I learned uh, quite a bit about them, too. You see, they call it wildcat. Mm -hmm. See, it's tax money, and they, they find more oil than just for a wildcat around. You know that? Yeah. They, they, here, I found out that they'd have to pay it to the government in taxes, mm -hmm. and so they, they decide to spend that money. See? <laughs> Got a question? Why did you join the service for World War Two? I didn't join. I was, <laughs> they drafted you me. Drafted? <laughs> yeah. When were you drafted? Huh? Well, let's see. Well, six months of 43, all of 44, and 10 months and 45. What unit were you with? Huh? What unit were you with? Well, I was first in the infantry and I wound up in the medics. You know, what, what division were you in? Do you know? 25th. 25th? Where'd you take your basic training? California. See, I was out in California. 
and I was drafted out there, but then I, tr I hadn't been home, see. And I had to bring my wife back because she, she couldn't stay. So I got an extension to bring her back here, you know. And I left from here and they sent me right back out there to take my base, you know, within a hundred miles of where I was living. <laughs> and then, well, just like I said, uh, they wanted to make an officer out of it. I said, it's infantry. I said, shoot. I said, I would trade places with MacArthur. I said, he's got troubles. And you go to said, Fort Ord? Huh? Did you go to basic at Fort Ord? Fort Ord, California? Well, I was there, but it wasn't, let's see, I've got to think now where, it was down below there somewhere, I can't, I forgot. Yeah. Uh, after your basic, where'd you go? Well, um, I brought my wife back here and then went back out there and went overseas. Where'd you go overseas? Oh, I went all, well, New Caledonia. Well, it was down there and then, oh, well, I just couldn't tell you, I was on so darn many islands. But I never pulled a trigger at anybody. I went on over there and then uh, just to go up. Well, I was, I was down and uh, joined up with uh, in New Zealand. That's an island about a thousand miles east of. I can't think of my own name. No, it's. Uh, well, anyhow. Is that east of Australia? Yeah, it's a little north of Australia, but it's uh, it's another island over there. Fiji, Fiji. Oh, that's it. It's Jillian's Island. <laughs> Did you ever go through the uh, you through the Southwest Pacific? Well, I've been in Vietnam. Vietnam. Oh, those poor boys. I felt sorry for them. Here, you, they, they didn't plan to win that thing. I know. I was there. Well, well, I know, but it was, was seeing the news. Yeah. And what's that? If you take a place or you don't pull back, you say, take it. Why? Well, you know, I, I'm not kidding you, and it's so true. You know what a war is, don't you? Yep. Huh? It's a poor, a rich man's war and a poor man's fight. Yep, that's right. That's what it is. Tell me some stories that happened to you. Huh? Tell me some stories that happened to you in the Pacific. What'd you do? Well, here, I took my basic in California, and I lived out there, and they'd come here, and then they sent me back out there, and I was in the infantry. I'm not bragging, but my father was a wonderful shot, and he, too, he taught me how to, to, to fire a rifle and everything else, you know. Uh, here, you know, most people <laughs> close one eye when they go to shoot. Why, he says, well, you know, Adam, you got a better sense than that, you know you can see better two eyes than you can with one, and he, he taught me how to, how to shoot with two eyes open. <laughs> um, tell me some stories about the Pacific. What happened over there, overseas? Well, here uh, I was in the 25th Division, and then uh, when I joined them, uh, oh, let's see. Well, we went down to, to New Zealand, and then I was in the 25th Division and I joined up and then we went up to, to New Cal, was there for a while. Okay, that was a staging area and then, well anyhow, I wound up in the Philippines where MacArthur had come back. But I was, uh, I was more or less recuperating there, you see. See, I was in a truck wreck in New Cal. What happened? Running at night, and they run off the side of a mountain. Well, it still bothers me through this hip, but they wouldn't send me home. They said that I had too good education, they was going to use my brains. <laughs> and I spent most of the time on a sign. There were several of us, you know, put us together. And I, I just got a, really assigned before, two months before the war was over. I was assigned to a hospital. It was a, general secretary and all, but instead uh, I ran a PX. Where was Still that? Still a private. Where was yeah. that? Where'd you run the PX? Well, that was uh, in the Philippines. 
I swear, MacArthur came back down. I can't even think of the name of the island. Luzon? No, it wasn't on Luzon. It was below there. Oh, I just can't. Is it standard automatic if you want it? You always have to make it up the phone. It's... Uh, these darn archaeologists and so forth and so on, they... They peddle around more and then... Believe it or not, I found out... See, all that stuff and, the, and then what I gave them and all, and it's all supposed to be classified and cataloged. You know, I think it was best to stole a lot of that stuff. Hmm? It's missing. There's some stuff in Oklahoma City. Huh? There's some stuff in Oklahoma City at the main museum. Uh, There's a display case down there. Hmm. Well, I don't know. Mm -hmm. They're supposed to fix the building and then display all that that I had in there, you know. Oh, I'm disgusted with yeah. telling you the truth. Do you know where the latrines were for this? Huh? Do you know where the latrine was for this building they restored? No, all I know is those uh, going up through there. Yeah. As far as I know, there wasn't anything back here but this bound to bin. Well, you see over here, they had them over here, you see. And then that was a rifle range, too, over there. It was. Man, I really picked up the lead bullets over there, down that draw, even when I was a kid, and then I even, uh, I've combed that place over there, middle of the truck, they've tried to stop me, but they can't do it. I said, go back and read the original contract on this place. I said, I'm looking for my minerals. I said, I own the mineral rights on it. <laughs> I said, you want to take it to law? <laughs> Not that, and then I turn around and give it all to them. <laughs> see, mm -hmm. well, I practically gave them that. See, I didn't have any children. I didn't. Well, uh, I just didn't own anybody else to ever have it. Yeah. See, man, I got a fortune for that. I've been offered one hundred and fifty thousand dollars for this twenty right through here. Now, I'm not wealthy, but I have a living. Yeah. I've been and I've seen. Um, so, how long are you overseas with the 25th? Uh, to, uh, 30 months. 30 months. Ever take part in any battles over there? No, no. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's funny thing, I was in the infantry and I was a darn good shot. And I went on the advanced party. Mm -hmm. And I was in a truck wreck. That still bothers me up through the yeah. ship today. And I had to spend more time on a sign, see. And there was, well, there was a whole bunch of us. Well, uh, we had good educations, they say. And they, well, uh, you, have you ever been in service? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know how they operate. Yes. <laughs> we, I spent more time overseas on a sign mm -hmm. <laughs> than anything else, you know? That's right. <laughs> um, what'd you do when the war was over? Well, where I came back home. Mm -hmm. I finally picked up my profession. Yeah. And, well, what, what kind of work you do after the war? Well, I came back. This, uh, I've always dealt in foods. If it's to eat or drink, I sold it. I even traveled for Wilson Company one time. And, well, yeah, that's it. Mm -hmm. uh, retail. If I could get you, which... Huh? Which is the cabin that, that your folks lived in? Huh? Which is the cabin your folks lived in? That right straight across there till I got that house built. Now here is uh, our home was this big wreck over here, see. I was born in that. Okay. My father, that burned and I see. 1916, I think. Then we went left. What's this building right here, the small one? That's the oven, bake oven. Is that original? No, that's restored. Mm -hmm. It was last year or so. Even that's all restored, see. 
Now this is the building here they they restored. Uh -huh. Yeah. Now I restored that one up there. See okay. where the office is now. Okay. Hmm. Now what what was that originally before? What stood there? Well, it was officer of some kind that went on up through there, lived there. I don't know. I, I couldn't tell you. The, and Raymond should have had the plans on all that. What these foundations right across the road? Where, well, right here? Yeah, those stones. <clears throat> that was a commissary. Now, believe it or not, that road run right through another one that had a basement right here, see? Oh, there was a building. There was ammunition here, and that was a guardhouse. Well, there's a building right in this area? Huh? Right over here in this area? No, right, right out there, from that tree out, out there, you see. Okay. It runs through a building, it had a, had a basement in it, it run this way, see. And there was a guardhouse, see. And that was a commissary. Okay, that's a guardhouse right there? Yeah. No, right here. Oh, the foundation over there? Yeah, right here, over that, oh, this fence right yeah, there, right. that was a guardhouse. That's the foundation. Uh-huh. And then that is the commissary right there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Those foundations. And you see, that was a guardhouse, and then this building here they had, and it had a basement in it, and it and they kept munitions in it, so I was told. Mm -hmm. Oh, as far as that's concerned, you see, this fort run on both sides, but they weren't rock, rock builders. They had rock foundations. They run on clear on back to that road back there. What part of the fort is original? Well, it's not any of it. It's just ruins, you see, and then even that house now, I restored to it back in the 30s. And, but that log, that log cabin is not even original. But that was built by Cooper, wasn't it? Yeah, well, it, yeah. over here was, you know, was Hatch, little Hatchburg, yeah. yeah. As far as I know, it wasn't original. Mm -hmm. See now, right on the the other side of that, it had a long room right off out there. That was the kitchen and dining room, see, of that thing. I remember that when I was a kid. And that's one that your father... And then had. right where Raymond's truck is was a smokehouse. My little brother burned it up. Little brother? Yeah. Had chickens in there, you know, in the summertime and all. And Mites got in there, so he got rid of the mites, and and, and, and the whole <laughs> the whole house. <laughs> okay. Well, Mr. Cobb.